On 31st August 1983, Korean Airlines Flight 007 was on a scheduled flight from New York to Seoul by Anchorage, Alaska, with 269 souls on board. After refueling at Alaska, the plane departed at 4 a.m. local time. Three hours into flight, the plane drifted north into Soviet airspace. Remember, this was the height of Cold War. The events that followed might have changed the history and the way we use our technology today. Almost every bit of information and data we use in our modern devices has a price tag associated with it. But there is one vital piece of technology that many of our devices depend on, that is free. It allows our phones to give us turn-by-turn -turn direction no matter where we are in the world. Tesla's hands-free or driverless cars use this technology. This, of course, is the Global Positioning System or GPS for short. Each of these satellites cost between $350 to $650 million to build and launch. Yet, its services is available for free worldwide. Well, not really free. The US taxpayers pay more than $2 million a day to maintain and operate the system. But it wasn't always available for use. These satellites were launched for the use by the military to provide them with pinpoint accurate location information on their aircraft, ships, and even their individual soldiers anywhere on the planet. The first global positioning satellites, the Navster 1, was launched in February 22, 1978 on an Atlas rocket. Over the next seven years, another 10 GPS satellites were launched into the orbit. These Block 1 satellites validated the system's capabilities and the lessons learned from the project were carried forward to Block 2 and subsequent much updated and upgraded satellites. Block 2 RM satellites include a new military signal and more robust civil signal known as L2C. The Block 2 F series are follow-on satellites developed by Boeing with a design life of 12 years. GPS Block 3 is the first series of third-generation GPS satellites incorporating new signals and broadcasting at higher power levels. On 23 December 2018, the first GPS-3 satellite was launched on a SpaceX Falcon 9. The fourth GPS-3 satellite launched on 5th November 2020, also on board a Falcon 9 rocket. GPS Block 3F is the second set of GPS Block 3 satellites consisting up to 22 space vehicles. This newest satellites will have many system improvements like redesigned nuclear detonation detection system payload designed to detect, identify, locate, characterize and report nuclear detonation in the Earth atmosphere and in space. This will also have some novel capabilities like energetic charged particle sensor search and rescue distress beacon payload and laser retroreflector array. Block 3F launches are expected to begin not earlier than 2026. As of today, we have 31 active GPS satellites available, whereas 24 satellite constellation ensures that at least 4 satellites have a direct line of sight with any point on the planet's surface at all times. This ensures the GPS constellation can pinpoint your location anywhere on Earth through trilateration or distance measurement from satellite to receiver. We know exactly where the satellites will be at any given time and ground stations regularly monitoring to make sure they are where we expect them to be. GPS satellites constantly broadcast a radio signal which the GPS receiver in your phone is constantly listening for. The signal tells your phone satellite's position and what time the signal was sent at, thus allowing the receiver to calculate how far away it is from the satellite, as the radio signal travels at a known speed, the speed of light. Getting this information from four satellites allow us to pinpoint exactly where we are on Earth. Knowing the exact time is essential to making this system accurate. A time difference of 20 to 30 nanoseconds would make the distance measurements inaccurate. So each satellite contains an atomic clock, the most accurate timekeeping devices available. A cesium-133 atom is used in atomic clock. Cesium atom is kept in a vacuum chamber and under the influence of magnetic and microwave field, they resonate at 9,192,631,770 times per second. So now, 
we can count time in billionth of a second or in nanosecond. Each of this resonance or pulse is also known as one pulse per second or one PPS. But due to their size and cost, this cannot be used in phones. So the GPS satellites also constantly update the phone's time to ensure it is able to calculate the distance between itself and the satellite accurately. To keep this time measurement accurate, we even have to consider the effect of special relativity. Because the receiver on the ground is moving slower than the satellite in the orbit, which is traveling at 14,000 km per hour, Special relativity predicts that onboard atomic clock will experience time slower and thus fall behind the clocks on the ground by 7 microsecond a day. Furthermore, the satellites are orbiting at 20,000 km above the surface of the planet where the gravity of the Earth has less effect on the curvature of space-time. Remember the Miller's planet near the massive black hole in movie Interstellar? General relativity tells us that clocks closer to the mass of Earth or higher gravity will run slower than the ones in the orbit. So if we calculate the time dilation due to gravity on Earth's surface and then calculate the dilation at 20,000 km on the planet's surface, we can see that the clocks will diverge by about 45 microseconds every day. Combining these effects of variation in speed and time dilation, we have to make the clocks on board each satellite to take 38 microseconds faster than those on Earth. If this effect was not taken into account, GPS position would be off by 10 kilometers each day, making it completely useless. But thanks to those ingenious engineers in America and Mr. Einstein's theory, we have a global positioning system on our smartphones with an accuracy of within about 5 meters. But this system wasn't always available to the average citizen. It was for military use only. Missiles used this system for navigation too. So this was potentially dangerous to open it up for civilian usage. But everything changed in 1983. As the Korean Airlines Flight 007 drifted from its original planned route and flew through the Soviet prohibited airspace, the Soviet Air Force treated the unidentified aircraft as an intruding U.S. spy plane. The flight was shot down by Soviet Sukhoi Su-15 interceptor. The Korean airliner eventually crashed into the sea west of Sakhalin in the Sea of Japan. One of the biggest mysteries was why the plane has strayed so far from its scheduled route. One theory proposed explanation involved that the autopilot being set to heading mode when it should have been on the inertial navigation system. Whatever the case, all 269 passengers and crew aboard were killed, including 62 American citizens. An error that could have been easily avoided had the new form of GPS navigation been available to the crew. I'm coming before you tonight about the Korean airline massacre, the attack by the Soviet Union against 269 innocent men, women and children aboard an unarmed Korean passenger plane. This crime against humanity must never be forgotten, here or throughout the world. Our prayers tonight are with the victims and their families in their time of terrible grief. And so on September 16, 1983, President Ronald Reagan announced the global positioning system would be made available for civilian use, free of charge. But there is a catch. The signal would be scrambled to decrease its accuracy to around 100 meters, making it useful but not by today's standard. This scrambling was called selective availability. This was intended to keep the US military's tactical advantage and prevent the system from being used for nefarious purpose. It wasn't until May 2000 that President Bill Clinton signed a bill to stop the scrambling and open accurate GPS to all civilians, including those outside of America. This was done in recognition of the huge economic benefits GPS could provide to companies in America. American armies have disrupted this signal in the past in areas like Iraq by blasting out radio waves that disrupt the radio signals coming from the satellites. And this isn't a difficult thing to do. US could simply choose to take away this privilege at any point and cripple businesses across the world. So countries around the world have been building their own GPS system. 
Russia has its own 24 satellite GLONASS constellation and so does not depend on the US at all. Europe has Galileo constellation and China has their Beidou constellation with 24 satellites each, while Japan has QZSS with 5 satellites in orbit to increase GPS availability in its urban counties. India also has 7 of its own satellites to cover India's land area alone. Japan and India's satellites are regional, whereas GPS, GLONASS, Galileo and Beidou are global and together they are known as GNSS system. Just imagine a simple radio signal that allows our farmers to operate driverless tractors to manage their field, commercial fishing vessels use it to navigate and find fishing location, the aviation industry uses it for navigation and collision avoidance, and you and me are simply happy to use Uber and Google Map to find the best pub in town. So if you wish to buy me a pint, click thumbs up and subscribe maybe. Thanks for being here.